Hello, my name is David Smith. I'm the owner and operator of Motive Machine Works, LLC. Uh, a little bit of backstory about me. Uh, I started in the industry about 10 years ago. I went to uh, Pennsylvania College of Technology for CNC machining and automated manufacturing. Uh, came out and worked in the industry for about three or four years and determined that I wanted to start my own business with a focus on rapid prototyping, quick turnaround for CNC machine products. Um, and I saw a need to improve some of the processes that were done uh, around the industry and, and I saw a need that I could personally make better. And so uh, I ended up leaving my job and, and just completely went full steam ahead uh, on the business and acquiring customers. And uh, four years later, uh, we're here with uh, three CNC machines uh, one full-time employee and myself being the owner and operator and uh, basically jack of all trades. Uh, so this is just walking in the door here. As you'll see, this tablet on the wall, this is actually just for uh, accounting purposes. My employee, that I have one full-time employee, as I said. Uh, this is a time clock, which sends all the information about how much he worked into my QuickBooks every week, and then I run payroll based off of that, so it's all synced up through the cloud, which keeps things easy for me. I don't need to remember a lot of things, as I already have uh, a lot of things to remember on a daily basis. Um, and so, as we start to walk in here, you'll notice that we're kind of running out of space for a lot of things. Uh, this wall behind this material rack right here actually is uh, a unit next door, and that's coming available for rent in the next month, which we're extremely excited to uh, expand and have some more room to kind of clean up this material rack and other things that are kind of uh, tight for space here. But as you can see, these are just random drops of material. Uh, we do a lot of different types of material, anything from plastics, uh, stainless steel, aluminum, steel, um, super alloys, things like that. So we tend to keep uh, a, a bit of drops of extra ma excess material here. Uh, sometimes if we ran a job and we had extra material left over, it stays here and then becomes something for a, a job in the future. Uh, but as you can see, it is kind of a little bit of a mess. It's one of the things we're gonna uh, address once we expand a little bit. But uh, walking over here, you'll see the, uh, the maintenance area a little bit. It's again, kind of small smaller than we'd like, but we're, uh, when we expand, we're gonna do a little bit better with this. But uh, just maintenance supplies here uh, in this cabinet, we have, again, different types of maintenance things, electrical, um, different types of power tools, nothing really crazy going on there. As we keep moving, you'll see this is our coolant area. So this, this is a drum of, uh, we use QualiChem 250C. Uh, this coolant actually, we fill this with water and then get the correct concentration in here and then this gets wheeled around. It's on wheels, you can see. Um, it gets wheeled around to all the different machines that we need to top off for coolant or do um, a fresh change of, of coolant as well. And speaking of changing coolant, this is uh, our newest acquisition right here, which was long overdue. Uh, this is a Freddy uh, sump cleaner. It's basically a giant shop vac with filtration from 200 all the way down to 5 microns. And what this does, uh, for those who haven't seen one of these before, it basically you suck your old coolant out of your machines and it filters it through and then you can actually discharge it back into the machine with this uh, gas pump nozzle looking uh, device here. Uh, it holds about 55 gallons or 50 gallons in that neighborhood. And uh, we just actually used it for the first time and it was, uh, it was a game changer. Um, and then over here you'll see, this is uh, kind of where our chip barrels go. Nothing, a whole lot going on there, excess chip barrels. Uh, and then our air compressor, it's, uh, it's an Ingersoll Rand rotary screw compressor with a, uh, it has a dryer down there, which you just heard go off, as well as a, uh, a, an excess storage tank for more air volume. Um, and then over here, you'll see as we keep moving, uh, this is our, uh, our CNC turning center, one and only right now. It's uh, Doosan Lynx 2100 LYB. Uh, it has, a, um, it has a, an eight inch chuck. Currently, actually, it has a uh, Royal Products uh, QG65 collet chuck on it. Uh, inside, the, inside, you'll see we have uh, live milling in both X and Z, and we also have a Y axis and a programmable tailstock. So no subspindle, but it does very well for what we need it to do. And uh, this has a new controller on it, which is uh, it's a Fanuc I series, but it also has the, um, it's a touch screen with the new um, 
it, basically for conversational programming, there's things of that nature that you can use on here. We don't really do a whole lot with that. We like the, uh, the tried and true um, FANUC here. And uh, yeah, there's part of the uh, um, conversational programming here. But um, as you can see here, um, there we go. There's the uh, old tried and true FANUC that uh, people like me really enjoy. Um, but yeah, this machine has been really well for us. It has a 2 and 5 eighths bar capacity. Uh, we do a lot of bar pulling. We don't have a bar feeder, but we really haven't had a need for one. And so, you know, basically we'll pull 36 inch bars through the machine and we can run, you know, depending on how many, how long the parts are, um, it can yield us a decent amount of volume before having to uh, actually handle the material uh, and, and replace the bar. So it, this, this does really well for what we need uh, in our business. All right, so this is the, uh, the sawing area right here. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that these, this saw is actually on wheels. And so uh, we commonly get 12 foot bars in of material, sometimes 20, depending on what the material is. Um, but the nice thing about this being on wheels, we can actually wheel it out to the common area outside because we are pressed for space in here and actually saw material in the hallway, process it, and get it in smaller chunks to more manageable sizes uh, or the actual size we're gonna end up cutting on the machine. Um, and so that ends up being really nice for us. This is designed to be actually mounted to the ground, but this uh, device we made to uh, be able to move it around has been extremely beneficial. Um, and then behind me here, behind the sawing area, we kind of have, um, this is kind of jobs in process and completed work area, so, you know, Finished machine parts would be up here, um, and then jobs in process down here. And uh, as I said, we're, we're a small job shop. We do a lot of low volume, high mix. So we basically will cut anything from one part to you know a couple hundred pieces. Um, but we do handle a lot of different materials. We don't necessarily specialize in one specific thing. But if we had to narrow it down, it would be plastics, stainless steel, and aluminum would be our most three commonly machined materials. But down here, you'll see uh, we're cutting 303 stainless steel. We've got uh, Invar 36 right here, which is a type of super alloy. Uh, we have Delrin uh, black acetyl. We have uh, white Delrin, which is going to be in the lathe here. We have some HDPE, some polycarbonate, uh, copper 101. We have D2 tool steel here. Uh, Altum 1000 uh, and some obviously some 6061 aluminum which is pretty common but we cut a lot of materials across the board we do a lot of rapid prototyping uh, quick turnaround type of work and that's kind of where our niche is uh, helping out our customers and fixing their problems when they have them and pulling people out of jams when they get into a corner when they uh, need something really fast that's kind of where we come in uh, that's where our niche is in the marketplace so this is my office area. It's not a whole lot going on. This office is actually mobile, so it can be picked up with two pallet jacks. We actually constructed this in the hallway. Uh, my uncle and myself, who is uh, a, a head of maintenance at a, a large uh, company around us. But uh, anyway, so this is where I do a lot of the programming. I handle uh, accounting uh, work in here as well, because I'm kind of a one-man band uh, in that respect. Um, and so here, like I said, I do a lot of the programming. I, I do a lot of fixture designing for oddly shaped parts um, and uh, answer emails, and anything like that. Um, it's not a whole lot going on, but it is nice because it's air conditioned and heated as well. And um, basically it gives me a quiet area outside of where the machines are running to, to think when I need to think uh, and things like that. But yeah, not a whole lot, not a big area, but it is very beneficial to have this uh, here in, the, in my small shop. All right, so this is our milling area. This is obviously, I was, uh, career-wise, I've been a mill machinist my whole life, pretty much, or my whole career, I should say. Uh, and so milling is definitely where I got started, and it's, it's uh, what I know more of, more so than the lathe area, although now I, I feel pretty up to speed with our, with our lathe that we have. But uh, this is kind of how we got started. This was our bread and butter. Um, so this is a 2019 Doosan DNM 4500, and this is a 2020 model of pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, both machines are equipped with probing on both the table and the spindle, and uh, they both have 12,000 RPM spindles with uh, uh, oil jackets uh, chilled spindles, which basically allows us to run at high RPMs uh, for a long period of time without any issues. So. 
Uh, it's common for us to, it, it doesn't happen all the time, but when we have a lot of high complex parts, which is one of the things that we specialize in, uh, high complex parts that we can run a big batch of, uh, com it's common for us to, to get these machines running and leave at the end of the day and have them Occasionally, we come in the next morning and they're actually still running, but uh, at least run you know, for five hours into the night or something like that. Uh, and these machines are both equipped with automatic power function, which will turn the machine off, trip the circuit breaker, and put the machine in emergency stop mode uh, after it's done running and it hits the M30 in the program. So uh, it's a really nice feature to have. We had to get that installed aftermarket. These unfortunately did not come with that but uh, it works phenomenally and then it saves our air compressor from running all night long, um, which, which definitely sa helps save energy. Um, and we are very much uh, into buying a lot of different tool holders. So you can see here, both these machines are CAT 40 dual contact. So we have some dual contact holders as well as regular CAT 40 holders. We do a lot of shrink fit, hydraulic, uh, of course, you know, your, your typical end mill holders, your ER32s, different things like that, uh, ER style collets in general. Um, but uh, yeah, we find it and we also love, this is uh, Iskar, this is a, a seven flute uh, high feed mill, which basically pushes all the pressure of the tool uh, into, this, into the Z axis more so than being uh, loaded radially, which allows you to use uh, higher feeds and speeds with uh, less cutting forces, which comes in handy for a lot of uh, difficult to machine materials like uh, removing a large amount of stainless steel or other alloys like that. Um, but yeah, these machines have been very much, uh, we love them. We came from two Haas machines, which were old and outdated. And uh, this was the next best thing. This was the, 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 uh, a great step up from where we came from. Um, but now we know that these are a lot more reliable than mainly because of the age of the old machines that we had, but these are very, uh, very much a staple in our business. So over here also, this is, uh, this is both, both, uh, places where I'm, where you're looking here, um, is a lot of tool storage, quality control. Uh, we have, you know, inspection equipment in here, things like gauge pins, micrometers, uh, et cetera. We also have tooling, uh, in here as well. Uh, things like taps, drills, reamers, uh, end mills, uh, inserts, things of that nature. We have a lot of that in here in this list of cabinet. Uh, one of the things that we're doing here when we get the new space, we're going to be adding another cabinet as well as a tool crib software, which is something that my employee is going to be basically taking the lead on. Um, and that's going to allow us to inventory some of our uh, cutters that we have and keep better track of that because right now it's starting to become a problem where it never was before. Now we've been expanding and more tools are coming in, so we're, we're constantly adding more uh, different types of end mills. But uh, this is where we break down mill tooling, uh, different uh, Cat 40 holders. We, we take tools in and out here with this nice Kaizen board. Um, we've got drills here, a dr basic high-speed steel uh, a drill cabinet. Um, and then we have more tool, tool holder storage over here because we never have the, enough tool holders and we're definitely going to be adding more in the future. Um, so nothing too crazy going on here. And then all the way over to here is where we have our shipping and receiving area, which uh, has become vital in our daily operations. Uh, at first, we were doing more local work and uh, when we first started the business, but now we're shipping orders all over the country. And so we, it was not really a destination before, but now it is. And, uh, you know, we, we keep a lot of different size boxes, stock, bubble wrap. Uh, and, and basically this is where it goes right out the door, you know, for a FedEx man to come pick up or, or uh, UPS or whoever our customers use for their carriers. Thanks again for Practical Machinist for allowing us to showcase our, our small shop. Uh, in the description, you'll see our Instagram and Facebook page as well as our website, so feel free to reach out if you ever need anything.